My name is Johan Oldenkamp, and in this presentation I will show that the pyramids in Gizeh, together with the Great Sphinx, form a clock that represents our third dimension of time. Let us first look at space. Space has three dimensions, we all know that. The x-s, the y-s, and the z-axis. They show the breadth, height, and depth, and each, each axis has a positive and a negative value. Now look at time. Time has exactly the same three dimensions. Also, each dimension has a positive and a negative value. What are those three dimensions? Light means, positive means light and negative means dark. Let us look at those three dimensions. The first one is the daily time. We all know that. The second one is the yearly time. And we'll, show, we'll see that the pyramids are built to represent the third dimension of time, which is the great year. Plato used to call it the, the great year. In order to understand the basics, please go to this website, pateo.nl, the English section, and there you find a video presentation called The Holy Science. Please watch that first before you see this video in, understand to, in, order, in order to understand the dynamics of energies. The first dimension is daily time. Daily time is caused by the rotation of this planet. I call this planet Terra. Terra or, uh, rotates around her own axis. And that's why a part is lit and another part is dark. Daily time is divided into four parts. The night part, then we have the morning. The moment of sunrise is the demarcation between night and morning. Then we have the demarcation again, it's midday. Then afternoon, then the sun sets, and then we have evening, and it goes back again. This part, the light part, is the day part, and the dark part is the night part. In the middle of the day part, we find the midday. In the middle of the night part, we find the midnight. This is common sense to everyone. And we divide that into 2 times 12 hours, 24 hours in total. This is 12 hours, and then we have another 12 hours, 12 hours. This is going clockwise. This is going counterclockwise. That's why you see the hands of this clock go counterclockwise. This is all common sense too. Now let us look at the second dimension of time, yearly time. Also in yearly time we find the same four divisions. We have winter, then the moment of the vernal equinox, the start of that, we go through this zero point in the middle of the apple, and then we're in the spring. Then we go to the summer, and then we go to autumn. It's the same as in the daily time, but now it takes more than 365 times longer. The moment of the winter solstices, this moment, the orbit or the bow of the sun is the smallest one. It rises here and it sets here. And the top of this bow is the lowest one in the whole year. Then it goes up again. Every day it climbs a little bit higher and it makes a little bit wider. Until here, this is the equinox, the spring equinox, and then we go further and then we rise, rise at the summer solstices. That's the top one over there. On June, June 21, it's on the top. It stays there for three days and then it goes down again, all the way down, 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 until here, December 21. On December 21, it stays down for three days. We could say the movement is dead, and after three days being dead, the movement rises from the grave, re rebirthing itself and going up again every day. This is the light bringer, and the light bringer also means Messiah. So the Messiah is dead for three days, and then the Messiah starts to rise again. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. Here we see the four faces and the sun Helios in the middle. The axis is a little bit, uh, makes an angle with the uh, ecliptic, and that's why we have the four seasons. In a year time, we see different stars behind the sun. We make an orbit around Helios with our light ship Terra, and we see different stars behind it, behind Helios. And we've divided that into two times six parts in 12 constellations. At the highest point of the day, we find the constellation of Cancer. And at the highest point of the night, we find the constellation of Capricorn. 
Those are the two extremes. And we see those extremes as the tropics, Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. And the Sun, Helios, makes an orbit in between those lines in a full year time. Here we see the Sun, Helios, we see the Moon, Luna, and we see our planet Terra. When Luna is there, so it's one line, Helios, Terra, Luna, then we see full Moon, because the full surface of the Moon is lit by the light of the Sun and is bounced back to the surface of Terra. That is the dynamics we see in nearly a month time, because the name month is related to Moon. And here we see the 12 months. Originally, this was the first one. This was the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and this was the seventh one, September. Septo, septem means also seven. Octo means eight, novem means nine, and decem, decimal, means ten. That's how we see it. Julius Caesar named this month after himself, and Emperor August did the same with this month. Yeah, but it's all related to the moon. This is maybe not common sense to everybody, because it's not a perfect circle, the orbit of Terra around Helios. It's an ellipse, but the Helios is not in the middle of the ellipse. It's a little bit offline. And that means on January the 3rd, Terra is closest to the Sun Helios. The distance is closest. It's called perihelion. And the other side, on July the 4th, the distance is the largest. The Sun moves with an incredible speed. If Terra would stand still on January the 3rd and remain on that position, then after seven days of time, the Sun would be here and Helios would hit Terra. We also see that this period, the autumn period and the winter period, is, is a one full week shorter than spring and summer. It's very interesting. Now let us look at the third dimension, the crater here. All the stars are moving, except for one, except for this star, Polaris, because Polaris is aligned with the axis of Terra. And we find it by using the Great Dipper and the backside, drawing a line, making it seven times as long, and then we find it easily. At this moment, the axis of Terra is pointing nearly towards Polaris. But about 13,000 years ago, it pointed to a totally different star, the star Vega in the Lyra system. And one full orbit, because the Earth is like a tumbling, uh, is tumbling like this, a full orbit, a full tumble, takes 25,920 years. And Plato called that a crate here. And it's officially called the precession of the equinoxes. Now it's nearly pointing to Polaris, then it makes a circle, goes all the way here to Vega, and then it goes back through Tuban and then to Polaris again. One full circle is nearly 26,000 years. Here we see the circle again. In the middle of the circle we find the constellation of Draco, dragon. And the tail, Tuban is on the tail of the dragon. Please find a look that uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Rowling in the Harry Potter books refers to Draco, Draco Malfoy. Yeah, or it's, it's related to this, uh, th th this constellation. Here we see the 12 constellations again. So each period takes 2160 years. That's one constellation or one uh, eon or era or age. We can all use the same words. Yeah, one eon is this time. And three eons together form a great season, great winter or great spring. And the total is this amount, nearly 26,000 years. And we have each eon uh, after one another. We're now here, at the end of the Aeon of uh, Pisces, and we are about to enter the Aeon of Aquarius. Starting with the Aeon of Leo, we enter the Dark Period. This is uh, nearly 13,000 years of Dark Period. And when we enter the, the, age on, the age of Aquarius, we start the Light Period again. So then we have 13,000 years of light. It's very important. We could call this autumn, this winter, this spring, and this summer, but for the great year. Why is that cost? It has to do with the orbit the Sun Helios makes. We see here Terra orbiting around Helios in a full year time. 
but Helios itself also makes an orbit. And that orbit takes very long. The orbit goes clockwise. This goes counterclockwise, this one goes clockwise. And the orbit takes 26, nearly 26,000 years. And what is the reason for this orbit? It's caused by Sirius, also in the Harry Potter books and films. Sirius Black. Yeah, I think Miss Ro Rowland knew about all, everything. Sirius is the dance partner because those two stars keep themselves in, in, the, in the orbit of their, own, uh, of their own circle. Sirius also makes a circle. And when we draw a line, this line always goes through the middle of this. No matter where they are, the middle of this line is always here. And on January the 1st, Terra is exactly on that line. That's why we celebrate New Year. New Year is the realignment of Helios, Terra and Sirius. Many people who believe in Christianity use this symbol. What does this symbol mean? This symbol is just the overlap of this circle and the other circle. So this is in fact the orbit of Helios, of the Messiah, of the Lightbringer, that part. And that part is the orbit of Sirius, the other star. That's what this symbol in fact means. So it's very true. This is about the Messiah. But it's the Lightbringer. It's Helios. It's the Sun. At this moment, when Helios is here and Sirius is here, and then the distance is closest. At the other time, when Helios is here and Sirius is here, and the distance is furthest away. This is a demarcation line. Here we see another one. And we have now four periods. This period is called the Golden Age, the Golden Periods. 